Talk that talk. I am your host for today, King Rems, and to my left we have the wonderful Portia, Miss Cherry Tar, Faith Fontaine, and our resident big man himself, Mr. Cotney Black, aka Clint. How you guys doing? Good, thank you. Good, good. Just to let you guys know, this topic today comes with a trigger warning. So just to make you guys aware, what we're going to be discussing is paedophilia in Afro-Caribbean households, whether it's spoken about enough, what support systems are in place, and just kind of looking at and addressing something that is a difficult topic. So just make sure you guys are prepared for what we're going to be discussing today. So in terms of the topic, ladies and Clint, do you feel that paedophilia in Afro and Caribbean households is spoken about enough? Uh, definitely not. Um, something like this in many families, not just African and Caribbean, but it's kind mm-hmm. of like hush hush. It brings a shame upon the family. Mm-hmm. I say shame. People feel like it brings shame upon the family. So as we know, being from black homes, it is not re- emotions and stuff aren't really discussed to that extent. Mm-hmm. Um it is something that we definitely need to discuss more because mm-hmm. we do, when we think of paedophiles and groomers and stuff, we automatically think white middle-class male. That is true, you know? very true, yeah. And you'll be surprised that, okay, they are a big factor in this thing, but yeah, you've got a lot that goes on in Caribbean homes that is not spoken about. Absolutely. I mean, statistically, 3.1 million adults have experienced sexual abuse before the age of 16 and 6.2% of those are black black men and women. So there is a real statistical issue there in terms of how it's addressed and where it's addressed. And it's also sexual abuse, unfortunately, is the most common abuse addressed on Childline. So a lot of young people are experiencing that and reaching out and trying to seek support and services. So in terms of kind of you guys' kind of view on what services are available and what kind of things are available, do you feel that we've got enough in place in terms of a government, in terms of nationally and locally for services for young people and adults who've experienced sexual abuse to really get the help and support that they need? Well, she might be okay. Yeah, poor sure. Oh, <laughs> uh, guys. Yeah, um, damn. But, but, so it goes um, hand in hand, right? Well, I do see a lot of people come through the doors who express that they have been sexually abused mm-hmm. when they were um, younger. That's why, like, paedophiles, make, I'm sure it makes everyone sick, but they really, really, like, get to me because it's just the impact they've had on an inv- individual's lives. Mm-hmm. So it carries, it stays with them throughout the tr- whole trajectory of their, mm-hmm. of their lives, yeah. sort of thing. So they end up, like developing like some mental health issues, et cetera, et cetera, just suppressed like emotions that they were unable to kind of deal with. In regards to your question, mm. whether there's enough support, I don't know. I actually don't Too know. Sure. Um, usually people are um, referred over for like psychology mm-hmm. and stuff like that, but I don't know what supports in place other than them being referred over to social services at the time once information's been put out there. And yeah, so I don't know what sort of supports that's a real gap then because owing to the fact you work in mental health you'll know about the adverse effect of adverse childhood experiences so in terms of that kind of going through it you're seven times more likely to commit interpersonal violence if you've been sexually abused you're also 30 times more likely to commit suicide if you've been sexually abused and if you experience more than um, up to four of adverse childhood experiences I think you're also seven times more likely to go to jail or have a criminal record so it's, it's a real shock that there aren't those kind of systems in place but what sort of systems were you hoping to be safe? <laughs> Personally, I think that they need to be funded and it needs to be ring fence funded. So it's not something that comes and goes with the fluctuation of national and local budgets. So it's something that needs to be embedded in local government systems and goes across the three sectors. So oh, private. What would it look like? It would look like a local service, which also has national intervention. So if you, for example, have a walk-in centre that's in a school, mm-hmm. it then allows you to go through the, the kind of the intervention at school system, then into the, the local system, the wider local system of the NHS, and then globally if you need, um, nationally and locally if you need to, so it's kind of across I hear you, all elements. I don't think that intervention always has to be at a government level or, do you know what I mean? Some, it needs to start from home. Oh, it does. But I think in terms of the funding to underpin that, you yeah. do need national buy-in because there's so many organisations that come and go because they haven't got ring fence sustainable funding. They do great jobs, whether it's a reduction of youth crime and violence, whether it's about ke- keeping kids in school or even in terms of some small sports interventions that just make kids feel good about themselves. They get small pockets of funding for a year, 18 months, and then they disappear. Mm-hmm. So having something that's underpinned nationally by funding that is ring fenced and can't be touched and not 
not used for anything else, I think is where it starts. Something in the school would be good, because I was raised in America and um, all our schools had counsellors. We mm -hmm. actually had counsellors. I don't know if it's like that over here or you can see one. However, you could literally just go to your counsellor's door and have a conversation. Mm -hmm. So I feel like a lot of the reasons why it's not talked into the Caribbean home is one, especially with men, I assume, they, they're not allowed to express emotions, certain mm -hmm. emotions. And on top of that, the disdain that is put on somebody who has been sexually abused needs to stop. Mm. Um, there's been situations in my family, my uncle molested my cousins, and the worst part is I lived with him, mm -hmm. and my mum had to have a conversation with me if I had ever been touched. And you can imagine for a mother how disheartening that is to have to mm. have such an a intense conversation with such a young child and to me, I was all innocent. I was like, what is she talking about? I was like, no. She's like, yeah. And at the time, I didn't know where she was coming from. Mm -hmm. But it destroyed my mum having to have this conversation. Now, a lot of kids need to be aware that they can speak to someone because the situation in my family, and this was on my Asian side, all right? So it doesn't just happen in the Caribbean and African homes. It happens in every home. And it's very subtle things that children need to be aware of. My mum always taught me something that I live by to this day, even with men and intimacy. If someone touches you and it makes you feel uncomfortable, no matter who it is, mm. they're doing something wrong. Because mm -hmm. my brothers could touch me and I don't feel uncomfortable. You know, Portia touches me, I don't feel uncomfortable. But the minute someone makes you feel uncomfortable, then you should speak to someone and say, even if it's nothing, it doesn't it matter. It doesn't have to be sexual touch. Yeah, it could be a touch it could be on anything, the shoulder. Yeah. Anything, anything to make you feel uncomfortable as a person. No one should be touching you to make you feel uncomfortable, so you should speak about it. And like my uncle, the way he was grooming was really disgusting. Um, Thank you for sharing. It's really bad, because just thinking about it, it just gets me a bit emotional. Um, he'll say things to my cousins like, Oh, make sure no boy touches you here. Mm -hmm. Or make sure no boy... So, in a way, as a child, you're like, oh, my, my dad's kind protecting, of protecting me. Yeah. Da, da, da. But he's actually grooming them and slowly getting them comfortable with feeling touched in a certain way. Um, so, you have to be aware of who you've got around your children. That is the main thing. Absolutely. I am so cautious when it comes to children. Um, the, the wrong look, the wrong cough, anything. I'm like... What are you doing? I think it's like by around 37% <laughs> you know. of sexual abuse is perpetrated by somebody you know. Yeah, it so happens do you a lot feel, in the family home. But do you feel there should be more to be done to expose the culprit? So there was obviously a situation with a rapper that was in the news <clears> and it was quite prevalent. Do you think that there needs to be more, more needs to be done to be spoken about and address their behaviour and, yeah, and do those types of things? And I think that harks back to the problem within the black community, especially within the community I was raised in, um, Nigerian African house. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I mean, I haven't experienced that firsthand, but I know it's a problem that's quite endemic within our society where um, speaking about these things, exposing certain family members, it's it's a huge deal because mm. you, people are thinking about reputation, shame, um, and things like that. So I feel like when it does come out, it's very nuclei nuclearized into the family and no one else can ever find out. Mm. And the problem with that is that, A, you're not gonna get a prosecution, Mm -hmm. People sweep it under the rug and it's almost like people act like let's behave as though this this thing didn't happen mm -hmm. and it's a sense of denial and I think that can have a real adverse effect on the victims because it's almost like okay so I've come out or it's come out that an uncle, auntie or whoever has abused me mm -hmm. yet the people that are supposed to give me the most care mm -hmm. are acting like you know, this isn't something that's important that needs to be addressed and prosecuted mm -hmm. or the person shouldn't, you know, suffer any kind of ramifications for their actions. So I think um, within our community, we need to dismantle this um, attitude of shame. Agreed. Um, I think that's the first thing. Actually, it's the second thing. The first thing is that parents should be um, comfortable with talking to their children about um, inappropriate behaviours from Absolutely. Adults. Not necessarily adults, even just older kids. Because mm -hmm. sometimes, yeah, anyone basically. Oh, what you said. And one, anyway. yeah, and one thing that I really admire about one of my friends, who's a mother, um, she's um, Caribbean, and um, she, when her youngest didn't really experience her raising her two older children, but when I saw her, um, I've 
been around her and her youngest. Her youngest was about two years old. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that age of, like, learning to speak and things like that, and you learn, like, this is my arm, this is my leg. Yeah. So she would actually teach her child, this is your private part. She would say, okay. say vagina. And yeah. and it, for me, I was shocked. I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> and then um, she's like, yeah, it's really important that she knows how to, if anything ever happened, anyone touched my child, mm. she can say, I was touched here and not feel like she didn't have the vocabulary to be able to express herself. I think empowering children is definitely your first point and also paying attention to how they behave. I don't know if you guys experience, go and hug your uncle or go and hug or go and sit with, yeah. being able to give children the freedom to say, I don't want to hug that person. Or I don't want to sit yeah. with them. Kind of giving them the option and the ownership over their own little bodies at any point in time, I think is, is really important. Um, I don't know about everybody sat here, but mm -hmm. there's an attitude within black families um, that children are there to be seen, be seen and, not and not heard. Yes. And I think ultimately our generation, I think we're changing the narrative a lot. Agreed. And when I was younger, it's like, be quiet, don't be seen. Mm -hmm. Why are you making noise? And, and things like that. Um, so it kind of like makes you grow up not really being a confident or to expressive be able to, and expressive and things like that, which could translate with if something is happening at home, even when you want to express yourself externally, you feel inhibited. Yeah, inhibited to do so. So I think, um, it's not really a something that we can solve with our generation because we've already grown. Yeah, but, but it's I think subsequent. With our children, I think I personally don't want to tell my children not to speak. I think communication yeah. is, is really important, important, even when it's children. So I think that is a really fundamental step in being able to... I'm not going to say that it's going to solve paedophilia because paedophiles will be there, but what it will do is it could um, decrease the amount of damage done and um, also... It reduces access as well because kids are able to vocalise. And yeah. I think also if you... Even if your communication within your home is fluid, a lot of the times in black communities and black households, what happens at home stays at home. You don't really go yeah, and exactly. tell nobody about your problems. Because yeah. I, I grew up in, in an environment that wasn't conducive to, I guess, a, a happy environment. But whatever happened in my home, I had to keep to myself. Because if I told anybody about it and it got back to my parents, I was in trouble. Yeah. You see what I mean? So then I'd feel like I've just created another bad situation because I'm Can trying I to help the situation. To that, of course. You know, I don't know about you guys, but you know, like, say, for instance, when you used to, like, get beaten up at home by like, your mum or whatever, you're quick yeah. to say, I'm going to call Childline. <laughs> so they're, like, call them. Yeah. Oh, where or Childline yeah. when it's physical They're, like, call them. Exactly. But Childline's also there for the sexual abuse. abuse. Yeah. But I feel like there's a gap there where kids aren't aware that they can actually call cool. Childline yeah. if they are actually being sexually abused. Yeah. Another issue I have is, let's just say, for instance, you do have parents that are concerned about sexual abuse. Mm. I know my mum used to drum it into me and my sister's head, like, if anyone was to touch you anywhere, let right. me know. Yeah. But I think we have to be mindful as parents how we communicate it. Mm. Because my mum, the way she used to communicate it was, nah, if I tell my mum I'm going to get boxed up, do you yeah. know what I mean? Because okay, like, it's it your problem. Yeah, I'm the okay. one that's going to get into trouble. So I feel like a lot of kids, they feel like if they are put in that sort of situation, because of the delivery of the message, the way their mum said yeah. it, they're going to get into trouble. Mm, so a lot of them that. try not to um, actually say anything because they're going to think, OK, I'm going to get the blame. Because kids automatically personalise yeah, it, you know? what I'm saying? Yeah. And another... Sorry, just one uh -huh. more thing, babe. And another thing, I don't know about you guys yet, but in, like... Af no, let me not keep saying African households because this happens across, across all yeah. um, black, cultures. Yeah, like, I'm not going to make this a Irish. black problem. It's not a black problem. It's across all, na um, yeah, cultures. But... Anyways, I'll have uncles that will come to the house and they will have this like little game they'll play on oh, my girlfriend, my girlfriend. I'm like four, bro. Like, leave me alone. Yeah. Like, yes. don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Yes. For me personally, like, mm. if you normalise that, a child won't know yeah, the you're boundaries. You're socialising children you know at I mean? a young age. Yeah. They won't know it's the disgusting. boundaries. So they won't know that, OK, cool, he says this in front of my mum or my dad. So him acting inappropriate when it's just mm. us two is normal because we're husband and wife. So I've got nieces and nephews and um, we've got, we had this, like, cousin that was staying with us. He was much older. My niece was, like, five. And he would always refer to her as my wife and I'd just be like, nah. Like, that can't run with me there. It's definitely can't run with me there. Because like, yeah. she will thing. now think she's a wife. No, but in, in a sense... Yeah. I definitely hear where you're coming from, Portia, 100%. Yeah. I understand the angle that you're viewing that from. But from, the, but from the other angle, it could be he wants her... You'd have to ask them the question whoever they are. Mm. 
but you, maybe his angle is he wants her to be used to being called a wife rather than a go down the girlfriend road or this or that. <laughs> I don't think it's that. Do you want to be getting yeah, a yeah. four-year-old child to be getting no. used to be calling a wife? Is I'm it, sorry, it's just it's a dangerous person. One moment. Is, yeah. it, is it appropriate for children, yeah. these little girls, to walk around with prams? I don't so, agree with that. So yeah. your government is trained not to be mums. We see it all the time. Little girls walk around with prams and babies. But is that sexualising as calling a little girl a wife? Well, if I, I, I don't know. Because these little dolls are plastic, and more time than not, they draw on them and push their faces in. Yeah. So I'm, is it, is I'm it... only saying that, that... Yeah, I know what you mean. I, I'm, I'm only that saying that if, from, if you're training little girls mm. to be mums... Mothers, you should change them to be wives. Why can't you say things that, are, that, that, that would nurture them to be wives? Because I don't no. think there's a I'm not saying that's OK. Yeah. I'm saying you have to ask the individual what, yeah. how we meant that. I'm saying there could be another angle to look at it. Principally, I get what you mean. Can I just touch on what Porsche yeah, said? I think it's so, weird saying, sorry, I'll, sorry I'm going to finish. I, yeah. I think it's weird seeing kids play with babies. Like, I agree. I find it unusual yeah. seeing, like, four-year-olds and mm. push around prams like their mums. I find that weird. But then could you argue and say, like, like role-play? Children yeah. play with... Imagination. With kitchen, 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 kitchen sets. I was cooking the family. <laughs> that plastic <laughs> bread. Yeah. But yeah. I think... It, it might be a little bit different because I used to play husband and wife with random kids my age. Mm. We used to get married and stuff like that. Um, but if when it's an uncle, it's like extremely inappropriate because as an adult, we know what marriage is, right? Mm. And most people are intimate in their marriages. So for me to associate mm. a child and say, you're my husband, that is grotesque. Yeah, imagine women disgusting. doing that, though. Women don't really... I've, I've not known anyone going to say, oh, look at my little husband. Mm. <laughs> no, That's not no, really I, 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 Yeah, I've um, seen it, though. Oh, I've yeah, heard that, yeah. but, yeah. I have All a right. question. Uh, oh, sorry, you can no. Um So, there, you know what Portia was saying, so... There was a situation when I was younger. I was about 12, 13. Um, I'm quite developed. And this guy came to my mum's house and he was completely wasted. And he literally just grabbed my breasts. And I literally what? froze. Yeah, I froze. And it's really weird. So the reason why I didn't tell my mum at the time was because my mum would have fucking murdered him. So I knew if I said anything, so some kids feel like they can handle it themselves. If I said anything, my mum would have killed him in the house, mm -hmm. right? And I looked at him, I know, pardon profanities, but I said, you fucking touch me again, I'm going to go straight to my mum. And he all of a sudden wasn't drunk anymore, and he was like, whoa. And I told my mum, like, 20 years later, mm -hmm. my mum lost her shit. She was going to kill the Big fucking guy. And I, just thought, and I just thought, Mum, I'm, OK, Mum, I'm not psychologically damaged by it. It mm. wasn't a big deal. And she was so upset with me that I didn't come to her. But the reason why I didn't come to her, because I just thought, seeing my mum in Holloway for the rest of my life, or is it is it detrimental enough to me for me to make it go to that extent? Mm. I know that if this guy ever tried anything ever again, I'm going straight to my mum. This wasn't enough for me to feel like my mum should get in trouble. I might get in trouble, not by my mum, because I, I know I'd be 100% comfortable telling my mum anything. And the thing is, kids should always speak up. I feel like at the time it was the right thing to do, but I should have never done that, because I don't know if another girl's as strong as me to tell a guy to fuck off, basically. Yeah. Um, he could have done I don't know if he's done it to any other girls. And it was a family friend as well. Yeah. So... Kids definitely need to speak up if they're in that situation. Again, I, I thought I could handle it, and I did. Um, trust me, I'm not traumatised at all by it. However, I knew my mum would have put herself in serious problems if I did tell her. So you're more scared about kind of breaking up the family than yeah. you are about anything so else? Yeah, so that's another thing people need to take in consideration. You know, Courtney was saying about situation, with, like, from a boy's angle as well, we're talking about the homes and this, that and other, but... These young boys that are in these trap houses, mm. a lot of them, and we need to speak about this, are being sexually Should abused. abused. Yep, and they're being sexually abused by roadman, man that's big time drug dealers, this, that, and the other. And the, the disdain on them boys, they can't even tell one of their pairs that's in the trap house with them or anything like that. And it's mostly happened to several of the boys in the house. Mm. So nobody's speaking about it. And then these boys are coming out into society having to deal with this and hold this inside. I do feel sorry for a lot of the road boys that are in this situation. And because of the lifestyle that they live, they will never and can never speak about it. So what we've mm. got is angry black young men mm. 
just angry exerting young men everything. forced up and they yeah. come from broken homes as well yeah, so they haven't got the foundation that. so that's another thing like I just it's even worse yeah no 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 there's, there's a there's there's been a whole documentary on um sexual abuse in trap houses well mm. trap situation um, and that needs to definitely, we need some form of government thing for that, definitely. Absolutely, because it isn't um, reported. Because our black aren't, yeah, no, they're not be being saved. The trap house. No, but in terms of male, male yeah. sexual abuse, I was there's just about yeah. to touch yeah. on historically well. low, yeah. historically low data, data on yeah, that. Yeah, there's no data, like they don't forward. get abused. Yeah. So, for example, yeah. the, um, there was a man in Manchester that was um, date raping men. Yeah. And it was over, I think it was nearly 100 men, but only one came forward. And there was on camera him, like, committing crimes but because men feel so ashamed and they can like the, the stigma mm. that comes with it they just don't report it so if it wasn't for yeah. that one brave man who came forward that rapist would still be on the streets doing what he's doing so you're very very correct there needs to be support systems in place for men and young boys across wherever your background wherever you're from to be able to speak about it so in terms of kind of we're going to kind of wrap it up now but in terms of kind of starting with with clint what would be kind of your top three in terms of how do we make it better how do we support children how do we as a society Solution -wise, do I've better Solution wise, I think it's, 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 it's a combination of what the three of you said 100%. You, the funding on these different levels, mm -hmm. the um, at home, mm -hmm. and the. Um, Housing at school. Yeah, 100%. And I feel at home, like what Faith was saying, if, you're, if it's your mother and your father, whether they're physically or sexually abusing you, then you've got no access at home. So you need the access to school and mm. the cats in that. But I feel like um, what, what Portia said was, was spot on. Same way um, you know what child line is, mm. but you only think the child line is physical abuse. Mm. Maybe there needs to be the same, same kind of system with a different name that encompasses sexual abuse. So, mm. But it, it needs to be something that's everywhere. It's so common that as child line is, you know I I'm think Childline just need to maybe just um, do a marketing campaign. Yeah. I think that's Childline all it is. Exactly. Or put more money or siphon more money into marketing for that kind of abuse. Yeah. I think, do you know what sure. it is? I have this conversation at work quite often. I don't think it's that. I think it's ensuring that your communications are culturally competent because sexual abuse is the most counselled um, form of abuse on Childline currently. But ensuring that your messages resonate across all cultures is something that we as public health, I work in public health, we as public health do not do adequately. So why, we wonder why there is a disproportionate amount of black people being infected and dying from COVID because historically we've had a poor health um, poor relationship with the healthcare system for as long as I can remember. So ensuring that communications are culturally competent and reaching where they need to reach, I think is the point, mm. in my opinion. But sorry to, to encapsulate and wrap up, Faith, um, what's your views? I think as well, we're missing a massive point here and that's the like churches and the mosques. That's let's an episode face it, point too, our, girl. Our community are extremely um, religious, right? And um, the problem I have with school is that this is this is a white country, yeah. and we have the issue where black um, young girls are sex over sexualized. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a situation where black men are also sexualized, yeah. and we and teachers look. I, I know from my experience, especially like in in like I went to boarding school, and I was I remember like one of the. Um, people that were supposed to look after me, they're male. I remember coming back from summer holiday, you know, I have a gross butt and stuff. Mm -hmm. And all the girls had a gross butt, but he was very fixated on making it a point that, whoa, you're very womanly now. And that made me feel very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So if, I'm not saying he's a pedophile or anything, but say if he had crossed the line from that, mm -hmm. I don't think I would feel comfortable talking to someone at school, whereas, I know that my church is also an extension of my family. That's yeah. that's a safe space as well. I, I think churches could do something to do better, um, to help um, better the situation and open that communication source elsewhere. And um, I think as well, like going back to the thing about this over-sexualizing our children, I think that there needs to be we need to do something as a people to start that conversation and bring that into the conversation of um, racial issues um, because I don't think it's spoken about enough. And, yeah, our children are, are sexualized and it's not right. Absolutely. And I don't think we're ready for that church conversation because the prevalence of sexual predatory in yeah, those environments... Yeah, it's even a place where people get abused, so it's, it's a high. difficult one. But not every church is like that. I know mine isn't. Hmm. and That um, you're aware of, front-facing. True, 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 yeah. true. But, um, 
I like to say it's not. Um, and Too when shame. I was growing up um, in my family church, we never spoke about stuff like that because sex is taboo in the church. Mm. And we need to change that because it might be taboo, but it's fucking happening. Very, so. very true. Thank you, Faith. Miss Cherry Tart. Um, my first thing is the concern for the kids. Um, speak to someone, no matter who it is, speak to someone that you trust and you will, like I said, that feeling, if someone touches you and it's wrong, you get that feeling of someone that you can um, trust. And if it's happening in the home, you must have an aunt or a cousin or someone that you can speak to that you can trust. If not, you can always go to the police. Feel no way about going to the police, even if you're 14, 15, 13, whatever age you are, Go to the police, you can always speak to your teacher. There's always a trusted teacher at school you can speak to. Mm -hmm. If you feel like there's no one to speak to, please don't ever think that there's always somebody that you can speak to. Um, don't have the fear of, like I did, losing my mum to jail because I thought I would lose my mum and, you know, things are, I'm just going to be left in this world and own. it will be okay in the end. You know, once you speak up on about it, because the thing is, if you hold this inside, it will destroy you as a human being. Absolutely. So you've got to let it out no matter how you let it out. Even if you burst it out in a room full of people or just one person, you've just got to let it out and let somebody know that you need to be OK. Thank you, darling. Pete? Um, well, I'm assuming kids ain't watching this, but um, <laughs> for the adults who are, I think communication is key. Um, the way in which you communicate um, what, like, what sexual abuse is, to your child is paramount. Um, again, don't make them feel like they've done something wrong if it was mm. to happen. You don't have to shout it at them. Like, if someone yeah. touches you, make sure you do... Da, da, da. No, you have to make sure that you have a reasonable conversation with that child, just so they don't feel any fear when they are um, coming to you. Um, other than that, yeah, the over-sexualisation, like Faye said, of kids, yeah, I, I can't stand that. Um, I think that's a major problem as well. Um, again, I don't know about like the white community and stuff like that, but I do know it is an issue. They over-sexualise children in the Irish community. If you yeah. look at some of the pageants and the things they do, I think it's it's a it's predatory behaviour that transcends any colour, any board. religion, any but race. You can't, you can't deny that within the black community, like it's it's a lot worse on, across the board. Like inter Have you not seen these little five-year-old white girls with the eyelashes and, no, and the, the, the princess white, that's dresses? That's a very small population of white <sighs> people. Whereas Have you the, seen the American the pageants? No, but that's pageants. That's a very small community. Within black young, young black girls especially are over-sexualised yeah. from a very young age, and that is something that's universal around you, the world. Yeah, because, like, even, like, when you, like, think about it, obviously in this country it's deemed illegal, mm -hmm. but in other countries you can get married as, as soon as yeah, you start your periods. Yeah. Do you know uh, what I mean? I so there's, that's, there's countries where there's no actual sexual age limit. I yeah. looked it up, yeah, and the youngest age for consent is 11. So what we might see is paedophilia. Yeah. Other people in other countries don't see it as that. That's another thing that it's we a do normal, need to take into account. It's a normal thing. So you yeah. can have people from different cultures come in here and all of a sudden they've been branded a paedophile, but back they home... They can marry at 12. It's just like, OK, you this know? is a normal thing. So where do we saying? cross the line with that as That's well? That's what I said. There's governmental responsibilities here. So, say for example, if somebody's coming over from, the U from a country where that is yeah. acceptable, yeah. Understanding your responsibility now as somebody who's applying to be a British citizen, you can't bring them things here, brother. Yeah, you can't so I, do I've that. Got, What's got, right to some people question. aren't. Uh -huh. So yeah, yeah we I may seem really like like green to this part, but I, I don't see. I don't see it. I don't see the sexualization of young black women. I need you to tell me about that. I don't. Maybe, well, maybe that's a good thing because maybe I, you I, just blocked that I all think, out. I think you what haven't gone. Yeah. I can't. I can't recognize it the way you're all like recognizing it how how i think maybe you don't recognize you know saying, it yeah. because it's usually done by people that don't look like us so for example um if uh if if a young black girl gets um raped or something um they would say um oh she's fast or they, there's there's actually statistics like brushing off or something yeah like this the statistics that have that kind of um, indicate that black young girls who say that they've been raped um, or sexually assaulted, sexually assaulted th the chance of the abuser being um, caught or anything like that, or even the case getting to any progressive point, is a lot less compared to 
her white counterpart. I mean, the numbers and are low across the board, to be fair. They so are it's, a small, low. It's, a, it's, it's terrible a small across margin, the board. But across the board, what do you mean? Okay. Okay. So, so in terms of if you're a white sorry. woman or a, a, if you're a white woman, black woman, if you're a brown woman, having um, ensuring, having a, a su successful conviction as a result of a sexual abuse um, case or yeah. accusation is low. We addressed it in series two. It's incredibly low. Gigi um, set the facts. There could be other factors, though. It can't, not necessarily just sexualization, but it could be because of racism, the fact that they just don't But hear do you not think that is, a, that is a, um, part of racism? That is a kind yeah, of racism. over sexualized Because it's... It, discrimination it is, is more the word. It's not... It's, it's taking away the humanity of a child. Mm. It, because based on their race. It, based on their race, in a way. Because but then it's not over-sexualization per se. We could say Well, it's, it's sexualization. It's not even over sexualization yeah. It's just sexualization You shouldn't sexualize a child mm. a minor. But then yeah. it's the reason being the fact that they felt that the child wanted the encounter, hence why they didn't pursue this, the case. I think sometimes it's that perception because they think that maybe, like, black... There's just this perception that black people are just more grown I think from there, a I, younger age. I think there is an issue regardless of race. And coming from kind of both sides of the fence, there is an issue regardless of race. There is more prevalence and there is more of a, a legal issue and less legal support for black women. There is no debate on that. But I think in terms of the prevalence of sexual predatory, it's high across the board. Yeah. It's high across the board. But in terms of kind of the advice, the remedies that you guys are given is beautifully encapsulated. Please make sure you guys hit us up in the DMs and we'll ensure in the credits that there are helplines and support lines that you can reach out to. Um, thank you for watching. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. We've been Talk That Talk. Thank you. Baby, I know you're